sounds really cool, and I see why you'd want to have everyone vetted, considering you're having it at your uh, at your locale, place where you you live, your homestead, mm -hmm. and everything. That's pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that sounds yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, I got a question about the uh, mushrooms. Um, mm -hmm. So, about how many mushrooms do you haul? And is it just a matter of? I'm guessing from the way you described it, it's just a matter of like knowing where to look, pretty much. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I go back to the same couple of places, um, and uh, one of them is really, really, was really ripe with chanterelles for, uh, on a few different occasions over the course of a couple months. Um, me, me and Aura went out there for like 15 minutes and came out with two bags, full. like, I don't know what the weight is, but a lot of mushrooms. Um, a lot of mushrooms. Uh, and uh, just, uh, I guess, as, as of late, found another spot. And uh, um, so there's a, a really popular mushroom called Hint of the Woods. Um, well, that's a September mushroom. That's those those come up around uh, around this time. Well, there's an August version of that called a black staining polypore, and uh, we found like I mean I I I don't even know like each one of them weighs like five or six pounds, and we've gotten out and you know gotten five or six of those big ones. So it's uh, we've got a, a shit ton of dried. Um, I guess they're they're basically hen of the woods, just the August variety of them. Um, so it's yeah it's 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 crazy uh, knowing the place to look and really I mean if you just look around you're gonna find mushrooms. Um, now, can you identify all of them that you can eat? Um, probably not. I only know a few, but um, you know, you just learn one every once in a while, and you know, you, you'll eventually have a pretty good handle on it. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Knowing where to look and just just look for them. The mushrooms are out there, especially after a day or two after. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a small amount of, a relatively small amount of knowledge and um, a little bit of experience would, could go, goes a long way because if you're only spending 15 to 30 minutes and yeah, you're out in a place, I mean, you're out kind of, you're outside the city, you're in a rural location where you can readily access that. But I mean, that's not a lot of time if you're, get, if you're really getting all your mushrooms and a variety of mushrooms. I think that's uh, actually really cool. I haven't heard anybody yeah, mention and, um, mushroom hunting for. And there's and that's that's not it though. There's a couple other really incredible benefits to to this. I guess I, I haven't mentioned turkey tail. They're everywhere too. They just grow on logs. But uh, turkey tail is a you know a so-called cancer cure. Like that's a turkey tea, turkey tail tea. Um, so that you can find anywhere. We just we 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 found a couple of logs in the woods, took them back to the house, brought them back here to the house, and you just kind of water it, and you just have turkey tail growing on that log, and it'll grow for a couple of years. And uh, or actually just ordered um, some shiitake logs, some, uh, some shiitake inoculated logs um, from uh, from some website, and it just got here a couple days ago. So we've got um, we'll have shiitake mushrooms um, possibly in the, in the next month or two, or maybe next spring. We don't know exactly when they're gonna when they're gonna come up. Um, and then the other thing I'll mention is like a financial and financial independence route or entrepreneurial route. Um, we we go to this health food store an hour away, and uh, um, the chanterelle mushrooms. Um, that she, she has them in little bags. They're like 0.03 ounces. Um, or they're like, it's, it's a really small bag. Um, but at the, at the rate, they're like $200 a pound is what it says on the bag. Um, and for the, for the hen of the woods, um, you're talking, you know, 50, 60 bucks, uh, honey mushrooms, which I haven't been able to locate in the woods myself yet. Um, we thought we did, but it was actually turned out to be a poisonous one. So glad we didn't try that one. Um, but, uh, you know, honey mushrooms are like 50, $60 a pound. Like it's crazy. Um, you know, what these, what these mushrooms go for. And it makes sense because, uh, um, before I even got into the, into the actual mushroom hunting and drawing, um, I've been taking, uh, you know, I've been all about, um, I take a mushroom supplement from a, a company called, or I guess a, a homestead out, out, uh, Northern California called Alpha Vedic. I'm off grid homestead. And, uh, it's this really incredible mushroom supplement. I drink some mushroom tea and then now I started, I, I've found out that I can find four or five of these mushrooms, um, you know, in the woods right around me. So, um, it's really, really incredible. Um, I mean, it's, it's mushrooms and honey have been like two of the areas where, um, I mean, I've, 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 I've gone, gone really, really far into, and also a, a lot of mushrooms are like a, are a really, really high source of vitamin D. So you can't really get that from other sources, like from plants. So, um, not, not easily. So it's, it's, it's insane. Mushrooms and honey for sure. Yeah. Don't anybody get me wrong. I, I hate the city. I just <laughs> hate it. The psychological pressures, like you were talking about, they hit me hard. I am not, I don't. Do well in this city it, it eats away at my soul i can't but, do it either um right but i i have to uh mostly on behalf of others make some kind of uh you know carve out some kind of ideas because i realize that there's a lot of people living in a city in the cities and that there has to be something that they can do aside from like well you might you might want to move out of the city you know so penguin that was a great idea gorilla gardening is a, a potential 
strategy for um, for a lot of city dwellers. You know, if it's not empty lots, there's lots of parks that you could put a lot of edible plants in. I know I've done it. Um, if you want to ask me how, because I'll show you exactly how to, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Um, not that I would ever suggest anybody do anything illegal, but um, the other thing is um, there is a, a bustling gray, uh, underground economy in a lot of cities and a lot of people are working under the table. And I think you're right. I think financial independence would be your first route. Um, but I think that's very easy. That's something that can be done in a city pretty easily. Um, you can have lots of different, um, you know, I always, I always get that picture in my head of the, the guy from the hood doing a, a haircutting business out of his car. He just mm -hmm. drives from house to house to house, cuts people's hair. Awesome. I've seen him. Like, so, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for sort of underground, um, entrepreneurial, uh, ventures in in the city just because you have a lot of people you got a lot of customer base um and that doesn't have to be you know black market it could be easily be gray market like you said growing mushrooms in your closet like the possibilities are kind of endless i think there's um i think there's a lot that can be done i, I don't want to write off the city entirely i think there's a lot that can be done um and i've just i've named a few just kind of off the top of my head um but like I said, the eighty percent of people live in cities. So I mean, if we're if we have, um, um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential there that we haven't maybe we haven't that, thought that of. Came to know. mind uh, was something that Rayo brought up, and it may not necessarily be a great idea, but I figure I'll mention it in passing. Some folks do really well at it and they enjoy it. Um, but then again, I've also heard people who have had you know their their mean time to harassment, their the amount of time, or I guess the frequency of interactions with coercers is actually pretty high um but the van nomadism with city squat spots um so that i mean that's another thing um if uh, uh if you bring down you know i'm speaking in financial independence terms again um if you bring down um if you bring down how much you need to live on you don't need to make as much and um then it then i think the mobility helps you too if you can always leave um, but then again, a lot of people don't want to don't want to to, to, to have that uh, that don't want to do the, the mobile lifestyles. But I figure I'd mention it in passing because it was something that we talked about a lot um, back in the day. Yeah. That might be a, a great um, solution to a lot of the people that I was talking about before. They're sort of stuck in the city, living paycheck mm -hmm. to paycheck. Everything's very expensive, and, and that's and that is a, that's one of the cheapest to... ways. Yeah, I mean, and, and people are forced out into yes. their cars, right? So. Um, I mean, and, and I mean, you, yeah, again, the only limitations are, are your imagination. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's some people don't, some people don't like it. And again, sometimes the frequency of interaction with choristers is, is higher. If again, people call, call the cops on you cause you have a sketchy, so-called sketchy van and, and, you know, parked on the street or something like that. But, uh, then again, I've, I've also, I've, people have had a lot of success with it. So, um, I don't write that off either. Um, I definitely don't just. Um, it's, it's as with anything, the, the, the more you do it, the better you'll be at it. And, uh, then again, there's so much information out there on van nomadism and even, even more from, I guess, uh, people who wouldn't be agorists or, uh, or wouldn't be, I guess where we are, um, as far as we are, um, they, they still, um, yeah, it still, still works, still works for them and they, they, they see a lot of advantage to it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an option. That might even be a good. Yeah, that's that almost sounds like a good starting point for somebody like I said who was in a very uh, tight spot financially. Even if you had to do it temporarily, like if you yeah. are worried about coming tyranny and you're you're concerned about the location you're in, but you're stuck due to finances. You know, you're you don't you barely make enough to pay your bills. Everything's so expensive in the city. Um, go I mean, make the intentional choice to go live in your vehicle for a while. Move around as much as possible. Go listen to the the Vanu podcasts, and um, get you know. Then you can save a bunch of money because you know living in your car is costing you hardly anything at all in comparison to rent in a city. Um, mm -hmm. And then you could stack a decent amount of um, money to where you now you have more options of as w to what path you want to take after that. So I think that's mm -hmm. a uh, that's probably. Uh, one of the better solutions, honestly, um, would be to go nomadic. Like, like yeah, the, the cops are going to hassle you, I, I think, more than they would in other areas. But um, 
you know, that's kind of the chance you have to take and you maybe have to be a little smart about it, but mm-hmm. um, you will save. Uh, that. That is the way out. That's an easy, yeah, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're looking and that's, who's yes. Talking. Yeah. If, if you're looking for your way at way out, whether it's out of the city or whether it's out of the first realm entirely, um, then, I mean, that's, it's the, that's the best, it's, it's, it's one of the best transitionary lifestyles. Um, and as Rayo said, it's not a panacea. There are problems with it. Um, that's why he stopped. He's, he, the Vietnamism was not enough freedom for him. So he went and lived in a tent in the middle, middle, middle of the Siskiyou National Forest. So, and Bella Coola, British Columbia traveled around, wasn't in one location, but, um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the end all be all and you don't have to view it as that. But, um, yeah, as sex said, um, if you're paying a thousand dollars a month rent in the city and you've got a car you can go live in, and if you go live in that car for three months, you can stack, you know, five grand or something like that. I don't know. Like it might be worth, um, you know, it might be worth, uh, it might certainly be worth doing, um, especially with, with, with yeah, it might, might be worth doing. I mean, if you could come up come into it with a little bit of capital and um you know you have to have a vehicle anyway if the circumstances kind of align i think getting a nondescript type of you know commercial style van diesel diesel uh, van or i might actually want a gas powered van in this case but you know just you just a white van that that can could be it could be a plumber electrician any any sort of um any sort of service nondescript uh, keep it yeah, keep you know clean and in good order mm-hmm. really try to basically keep it impeccable so you you draw as little it's the most common type of thing you see on the road you draw as, as little of attention to itself as you can and if you're able to blend in and you'd blend in so much easier in, in that urban setting where like for example a street over for me is a ton of different it's like a light industrial type of area although it's kind of turning into uh, you know a microbrewery and little hip restaurants and stuff like that but um it's it's still like we're right uh, stone's throw from where I am is still very much, you know, mechanic shops and little lots where people have tractors and, and some vehicles, parks and stuff like that. I mean, very much light industrial. Like you could park a van up on any of these streets and it would be the most um, un, unremarkable thing. Uh, unremarkable thing. And then there's a, uh, you know, you got to keep have it insulated. You got to have a few technical things uh, worked out that I think, I think there's people that, that have, Kind of pioneered this that can pretty much trans you can get that knowledge transferred you pretty efficiently so you don't have to trial and error yourself um i i think that'd be the the route to go um you you want to basically blend a blend in as much as possible and b you know just have as many of the uh comforts for as, as little as uh you know little expenditure as possible little as little cash outflows as possible and you don't have the option of like living off of you, you don't have an option of producing much, um, so you're really trying to minimize your your cost there. And uh, really, when you think about the the the, the amount the way rents are going in the cities, I mean, when, you, when you're doing the numbers, I, I think that that you can save quite a bit once once you make that initial investment, because rents are only going up, and they are they are very very high in a lot of these places, and they're only going up. I know you said a thousand dollars a month. That's like cheap in a lot of cities. Like yeah. sixteen, eighteen, two grand a month for a crappy apartment in a lot of cities. I yeah, I think I we're on to something here. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I think we're on to something here. If you, I'm just kind of playing this out in my head, so if you could couple all of the things we said together, so you get out of your crappy apartment that you're paying too much for. You die. Um, you move into uh, a van like Penguin Sec. Make, make it look like a work van, so you kind of blend into. Um, you're just any other plumber or electrician in the area. You diversify your income, and then you couple that with, um, you know, knowing some people in the area, maybe uh, doing some community gardening or that sort of thing, doing some gorilla gardening in the in the forest, so you always have a source of food around. Uh, maybe you fig- figure out some a place to hide some water collection and that sort of thing, just so you can, mm-hmm. you know, kind of have your food and water. And if you couple all these things together, it's kind of starting to come together for me to where this could be a really, you could be pretty well off um, by doing all of these things at once. You know, I could see this as almost like a lifestyle. And if you got a couple of, you know, underground um, um, side hustles or sources of income, um, that sort of thing, wh- whatever that is. Uh, depends on whatever you're good at, but um, I, I could see this being uh, a reasonable strategy. We'll say 
maybe not still not as good as moving out to the country in the homestead, but much better than say living in an apartment and living paycheck to paycheck. So I think we solved the problem here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sir, it's certainly, it's certainly a solution. Uh, certainly a solution. Which we've been talking about now. We last two episodes we did was, um, I, I'd like to run this by you actually. Last two episodes we did were about uh, sort of an agorist delivery system and the necessity. This is similar to what we were talking about just now, but the necessity for go betweens between these different nodes, we'll say, oh, you yeah. know, um, of mobile people uh, with the ability to deliver goods um, in between these different nodes, these second realms or, or whatever. Um, you can call it a proxy merchant, I guess, but. Um, but more, more, we just need no, because you're not going in between the the first and second realm necessarily. Mm-hmm. But we need something to cheaply deliver goods and services, uh, goods and and that sort of thing in between these different uh, sort of homesteads and nodes and mm-hmm. freedom cells and et cetera as we're spread out all throughout the country. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, so um, yeah. Uh... Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, as as we've we've been talking about, and as as Bonnie was known for, you know, mo- a lot of mo- mobility is big to it. Nomadism is uh, big with it. Lots of van nomads got quite a few in the network right now. Um, so yeah, back in uh, April of this year, I uh, um, again in Free Republic of Pasnia fashion, I um, established the Pasnia Department of Transportation, which is um, and which is for that for that purpose. Yeah, um, and it's not. I mean, it's still every a lot of this stuff is in early development and um, hasn't come together yet. But the idea is there. The idea is formed. And uh, yeah, certainly uh, um, the Pasnia Department of Transportation's main role is to deliver, you know, uh, um, man and material. Uh, you know, man and material. Um, all over um, to these different second realms in Pasnia. So it's uh, it's definitely an important one. Um, uh, it's yeah, definitely definitely an important one, and uh, one I I hope just uh, well not hope it's I mean it's 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 it's, an, it's inevitable once we uh, you know once the the people come, um, and uh, it just starts to happen. But uh, yeah, you're 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 exactly right. Um, I'm with you 100. percent To to me that seems like um, until we figure that one out. A lot of this other stuff just can't happen. Well, I don't want to say that, but it, we can't we can't build much f- f- past a certain point until we figure out that sp- specific mm-hmm. acts, uh, aspect of it. Until we have like our, our own distribution lines, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of other things are, are are going to get like sort of suppressed. Like until I can send you a jar of pickles with some nomad f- that's going by my homestead to yours. Mm-hmm without having to go through, you know, uh, paying a, a bunch of money in shipping to go through USPS. Mm-hmm. Uh, until that can happen, we're really limited to what we can do. Yeah, I just hope it... Uh, I almost think this is something that we should have in place before we really need it. Yeah. Because so. when once we really need it, it's going to be hard to put together. So what I mean is like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't go to the store tomorrow unless you have Z papers, please. Um you know, I might be okay. There might be some things that I'd like to trade with somebody else that I don't make myself. Um, but a lot of people are going to need be in need of something of that um, sort of service. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point, it's almost like too late to, to develop it. It's almost True. something you should have in place before you get to that, before it becomes a necessity, before you get waves of people that need it. Yeah. That's, I've been harping on this for um, I guess the the, the, the the only struggle the only struggle is um I mean I, there's there might be a handful of them right now um and they do they do driving jobs so like they're traveling all the time anyway so like it, if it works out they they can do these things but um I mean it's it's just uh it's just that um yeah there's it's to to to, to for for it for the where things need to go and where they're going to line up is difficult with not as many um so called drivers per se um so yeah no i'm I'm with you I'm with you and i it's it's just a it's a logistical hurdle right now, so I'm open to any any advice and suggestions on on how to how to expedite that uh, I'm just not not quite sure right now so, like i said, I, cr- I created I created this uh, or I, I put this out in April um and actually created the Pasney Department of Transportation telegram channel. Um, but, uh, yeah, nothing has really been done with it since then. So yeah, if you've got any ideas, I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears. Well, one thought I had, and it, it may not completely align with what is currently happening, but so you have a lot of people that may not be 
uh, of like mind, but they travel for work or something of that along those lines. They're a traveling salesman. They're a trucker. Um, so they might um, they might not agree with us on certain things per se, but they might be persuaded to um, you know you, you toss them a couple of bucks and they might put a couple of boxes in their front seat if they're going to a certain uh, mm -hmm. certain direction. So you know you get a trucker that does a route to California every week. Well, I could you know ship him a case of pickles every time he goes and get, toss him a couple of bucks, and it's not costing him anything. You know, it's not, um, it's, it's not, not, a, not a, really an inconvenience. He's getting paid to go out there either way. So that would have to be like a, a sort of a white market, well, white market sl uh, slash gray market uh, activity. You'd have to develop some sort of app, kind of like an Uber for packages or so, something along those lines. But you could, uh, it could exist as a white market activity, but um almost as a cover for more, you know, sort of gray market activity. And once you have that sort of um, thing going, it'd be, be easy for, um, uh, I don't know anything about the technical end of that sort of thing, but it seems to me it would be easy for sort of uh, agorists or venuans to um, to sort of pl float in and out of something like that. If you had, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's an app or a website or whatever, but they could, you know, you could, they could use that as cover, you know. Yeah, you you have the but you have a you put together yeah the 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 white I mean have act there and there will be products and services that are completely white market obviously um not everything's illegal mm -hmm. yet um so yeah I mean uh you could certainly um and people are always I mean especially now people are looking you know looking for for income and uh, you know some sort of a uh, um, people do so many deli so many de su successful deliveries um, they build up a reputation and. Um, then they can move on to the, um, you know, the second layer um, of that where there are, you know, more, I guess, maybe illicit or possibly illicit things. Um, not that they would need to know anything that's about the, anything that's in the packages. Um, well, maybe they do. Maybe that's between them and the, the person that, that they're using. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, just uh, that's the first thought that um, really this the my, the main soul uh not that my sole reason but my primary reason is people want my pickles and it's too expensive to ship them that's the like the whole reason right. i'm so fired up about this uh -huh. but um i'm i'm kidding but that that's what was my first thought when um when i when i first was like man we need like an app or something like an uber for fucking agorist package delivery where you or where you can just say I, I need something from this place, you know, um, and, there, and you match it up with a trucker that's already going out there or a traveling salesman or whatever the heck, and you toss them a few bucks. And it just seemed like it would be an easy way to at least get something started. And it should, I mean, it should be, um, it should be pretty, just a pretty automated process, um, you would think. And there's probably already yes. algorithms out there that would do that, so that, the search algorithms that would already do that, I presume. Um, but... Yeah. yeah, I mean, so yeah, I'll, I'll release this on the Vani podcast feed too. But yeah, I mean, if there's any anyone out there who wants to work on this or on your your audience too, I mean, that's uh, I th I'm with you. It's a, it's a it's an important it's an important step. It's an important step, and I think that might be a, a possible yeah. possible launching. Route. All right, and uh, now that I'm in post production and uh, putting out these clips, I just kind of had the idea of uh, how this could very easily uh, be. Uh, be made a reality. Uh, so there's an app I did a, a an episode on last, I guess it was a few years back on the Liberty, Liberty Intertech Radio called Libre Taxi. And it was supposed to be a free and open source version of like Uber or Lyft. Um, it was a Telegram bot. Now, I presume um, all this would really take is, uh, is a code rewrite, um, rena the, a renaming, renaming of the app. Um, and instead of doing it based on uh, location, um, we just customize that too to where... Um, However, the search algorithm um, would be set up. I'm not quite sure. But uh, as for any anyone in my audience um, that uh, could possibly, uh, you know, look into the Libre Taxi um, code and see how easy or difficult that would be um, to, to do a rewrite on, or if it would be easier to start from scratch and not use Telegram. Um, but uh, I just know that, uh, um, I mean, I, I never had any possible deliveries with it, so I couldn't test it out on that front, but I did test it out in, in the sense of using the application. Uh, so, I don't know. Just a thought, and uh, you know, hopefully, it uh, hopefully it could work out.
Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm. Device connection terminated.